and the J inverse will go to the other side and we'll get the expression which is shown in the blue rectangle. To work out the inverse Jacobian, because we've got everything else already, uh, what you can do is look for a square portion of the Jacobian matrix uh, that's relevant to what you're trying to find out. For instance, you may be calculating just linear velocities uh, and you can invert that square part quite easily, as long as it's not too big, um, otherwise you might need a computer to help you. So what we're going to do is do an example using the arm we've been using throughout this lecture uh, and the question we've posed is find the joint velocities q1 dot and q2 dot uh, in terms of the tool velocity x dot and y dot. So this is the process we've done before but in reverse. Uh, so what I've written here on the left is our original equation that relates the tool point velocities x dot and y dot to the joint velocities q1 dot and q dot. Uh, but what we're going to want to do is flip this in reverse so we have an equation which has q1 dot and q2 dot equals something else. Uh, you'll need to revise a bit of your matrix theory. Uh, remember if you've got a square matrix um, A, which is A, B, C, D, uh, and you want to inverse it, what you do is you first of all take one on the determinant of that matrix and the determinant of matrix A is A times D minus B times C. Uh, and remember to take one on that. And then you multiply it by the A matrix, but rearranged a little bit. So the A and the D swap places, and B and C change their sign. So that's the process for inverting this nice simple 2 by 2 matrix. So here we've got our example arm again and we have our traditional um, equation that relates the tool point velocities to our joint velocities using the linear Jacobian. And what we want to do is multiply everything by the inverse of our linear velocity Jacobian. Uh, and you can see that that's what that negative one here is for. Uh, and this, with a bit of rearranging, we get an expression which relates our joint velocities in terms of this inverse Jacobian times our tool point velocities. So, of course, we actually have to work out what the inverse of this Jacobian is. So, what we do is we take 1 on the determinant, which is 1 on these things multiplied by each other. So, we get minus q2 sine q1 sine q2 minus these two things multiplied by each other, which is q2 cos q1 cos q2. And that is multiplied by the, the original Jacobian matrix, but with some rearranging. So the sides the, the A element and the D element swap location. So we get sine Q1 and negative Q2 sine Q1. And the other two elements change their sign. So we get negative cos Q1, put some brackets around there, and we get negative Q2 cos Q1. Uh, put some matrix boundaries on that. Now this uh, inverse, de this determinant, one on the determinant, uh, simplifies simply to one on negative Q1, negative Q2, uh, and then you get the rest of this matrix. And this is what we've got written out here. So this is our expression which relates our tool point velocities to what we need to set our joint velocities too. So if we do an example with our example arm again, uh, we've got joint 2 extended to half a meter of extension. Uh, joint 1 uh, is not rotated at all, so Q1 is going to equal 0 degrees. Uh, and what we want to do is find the joint velocities that will make the tool point move such that x dot equals 1 meter per second and y dot equals 1 meter per second. So we have 
our rearranged equation, which relates our q1 and q2 dots to x dot and y dot. Uh, so all we've got to do is plug in numbers. So q1 is going to be 0 degrees because the arm's not rotated at all. q2 is going to be half a meter because uh, that's how much it's extended. And then we can also sub in for x1, x dot and y dot and they're both equal to 1. Uh, and that's all the information that we need. So with all these numbers plugged in, uh, it's some fairly simple uh, math, uh, and we get that Q1 dot, the revolute joint, is 2 rads per second, and Q2 dot is 1 meter per second. One thing to note about possible things that can go wrong, and this may affect you in your prac, uh, is that the determinant uh, which is part of this whole mathematical calculation that we do, can play a really critical role uh, in, in how the math does or doesn't work out. You'll notice that we, we do a 1 divided by the determinant. Uh, so that's fine as long as the determinant is a positive or negative value, uh, but if it's uh, 0, uh, then we get a 1 divided by 0 and we get uh, an undefined answer. We can't really get any sense out of it. Uh, so whenever this determinant is zero, uh, there's no valid joint velocity solutions. Uh, and it's important to note that it doesn't matter what our tool velocities x dot and y dot are. They could be uh, one meter per second, they could be zero meters per second. It doesn't really matter if the determinant is zero because then you get that divide by zero uh, and you get no defined joint velocities. So that's something you can check uh, to see whether you are going to get a sensible solution uh, for your robot arm. And that's reiterated in this slide, uh, which is just saying generally it pays to keep track of the determinant of the Jacobian uh, and avoid configurations. Uh, so often you have a few dis design decisions uh, or controller decisions when you're making your algorithms uh, and you might want to tailor these so that you can avoid uh, situations where the, the determinant approaches zero and you get no reasonable solution for your joint velocities. So what we're going to do now uh, is build up some groundwork for describing uh, velocities uh, with a bit of a more formal mathematical context. Uh, so if we're looking at just a, a translational joint, uh, which is shown in the uh, picture here, uh, the velocity of the uh, tool point at the end of this translational joint is just the rate of change of the joint variable, q dot, times k. And k is the, the axis showing the direction of actuation or the direction of movement. So that's k there. Uh, because this is a prismatic joint which just moves uh, in and out, there's no contribution to the angular velocity of the tool point. Uh, so omega equals zero. So for a revolute joint, uh, we have a more complicated relationship uh, between the joint variable and the translational velocity of the tool point. We have our rate of change of our joint variable, uh, which is going to be an angle in this case. In this case, we have it by k because k is the, the axis about which this joint is rotating the link uh, and then we have it times r and r is the distance between the or basically the length of the link uh, so that's relating velocity to the joint variable velocity sorry velocity to the tool point to the joint variable velocity then we also have a relationship that relates uh, the angular velocity of the tool point uh, is equal to the velocity of the joint uh, once again multiplied by k where k is the axis that the joints are rotating around uh, so yes yeah, it's the unit vector in the, the z direction and we always set our z direction to be the axis of actuation uh, which we learnt in our last lecture so if we go back to our uh, angular velocity uh, calculations, uh, we've, we've shown that a prismatic joint itself uh, doesn't contribute at all to the angular velocity of the tool point and that a revolute joint uh, contributes directly uh, via its joint variable, 
So the omega equals k, which is the axis of actuation that it rotates around, times q dot, which is the, the rate of change of the joint variable. So if we were to write a general uh, Jacobian uh, for angular velocity, uh, we could write it like so in the rectangular box. And uh, the p, I can't remember what the proper name for this symbol is, I'm just going to call it p. I think it's rho, perhaps? Anyway, p uh, is going to be 1 if the joints revolute because that revolute joint will contribute to the overall rotational velocity of the tool point. Uh, and it's going to be 0 if the joint's prismatic because that doesn't contribute. Uh, Z is going to be... Uh, Z is like the K in our original expression. Z is the direction of the Z axis of the ith, ith coordinate frame uh, in terms of the base frame. So defined in the base frame uh, coordinate frame. Uh, and there's an easy way to get uh, Z subscript I. Uh, what we can do is just look at the transformation matrix for this particular uh, reference frame. So for instance, uh, if we are dealing with transformation matrix subscript I, superscript zero, this is the matrix which relates points in reference frame I back into the base reference frame zero. Uh, if we look at the third column and the first three elements in this third column, these are the Z elements defined in the base world frame. So this means if we've already got our transformation matrices defined, uh, we can just rip numbers straight out of them to plug into our eventual solution. So this is our angular velocity example using a three-link, three-joint uh, robot arm from our previous lectures. We've got joint one, which is revolute, joint two, which is revolute, and joint three, which is a prismatic, which goes back and forth in that direction. So what we're trying to work out is our angular velocity Jacobian. Uh, so first of all, um, we've got to set work out what our, our rows or p's, whatever they're called, are uh, equal to. So joint one is a revolute joint. So row one equals one. Joint two is a revolute joint as well. So row one equals one. Joint three is a prismatic joint, doesn't contribute at all to uh, angular velocities. So row three equals zero. So that's um, fairly straightforward already. Now we've got to work out what our Z1 and Z0 is. So Z0 uh, is defined in the ref base reference frame. Uh, so Z0 is, is effectively Z0 in 0. Uh, and so it's just very, very simple. It's just 0, 0, 1 because there's no transformations. It's all in the same reference frame. Z1 uh, comes from here. So the first three elements of our third column of our transformation matrix and Z2, um, so we've got a row, a row 3 Z2 term. Uh, we're not actually going to need this because we've already worked out that row 3 is equal to 0, but just for, for fun, uh, Z2 would also would come from here if we were to use it. So we've got three arrays that are our Z2. 0, Z1, and Z2 uh, parts of our angular velocity Jacobian. So that's what we've got written uh, in this slide. We've pulled out those three sets of three elements. Uh, the first set is the 0, 0, 1. That's the Z0 defined in the base reference frame. Uh, the second column uh, has been pulled out from the transformation matrix relating frame 1 and frame 0. And the third column is all zeros uh, because our row, row, what was it, row 3 